As your ASP.NET web pages become more complex, it's useful to be able to break out functionality into separate subroutines or functions. Once again, both the C-Sharp and Visual Basic languages support this feature. I'll describe here how to create a function and how to call it using both languages. I'll start again with C-Sharp. I'll open the file programmingc-sharp.aspx and then I'll save it under a new name selecting File, Save As and I'll name the file functionsc-sharp.aspx. When you declare a function in C-Sharp, you start with an access modifier. The access modifier determines the availability of the function. If you're placing the function in the same page in which it's called, you can declare it as private if the function should be available from both this page and from any pages that are derived from this page, that is, in object-oriented terms that are subclasses of this page, you should use the access modifier protected. And if you want the function to be callable from anywhere in the application, you can use an access modifier of public. There are other access modifiers available, but those are the three that are typically used most often, private, public, and protected. In this example, I'm going to be calling the function from within the same page, but because I might want to use this page later on as the basis of another page, I'll typically use the access modifier protected. So I start off with the protected keyword. Next, I indicate the data type of a value that the function is going to return. If the function is simply going to take some action but not return a value, you put in the keyword void with a lowercase v. But if the function is going to return a value, you use the data type in this position. I'm going to create a function that returns an integer, so I'll use the int data type. Next, you put in the name of the function, which I'll call add values. In C Sharp, you always put in parentheses at the end of the function name, regardless of whether the function can receive values. This particular function is going to receive two values or arguments. I'll name them val1 and val2 and I'll data type them both as integers. So I'll use the C-sharp syntax, int, then the name of the variable, val1, then a comma, and the second argument, int again, and val2. And then I'll close the function signature by putting in the closing parenthesis. After the function signature, and within the braces, you put in the code that you want to execute. Because I said that I was going to be returning an integer, I must return a value. And you do that with the return keyword. I'll return the results of this expression, val1 plus val2. Notice that you don't need parentheses around that expression. You can put them in if you prefer. Also notice that the plus operator in C sharp is used both for mathematical addition and for concatenation of strings, which I've already done in other videos. This is called operator overloading the reuse of an operator for more than one purpose. So that's my custom function, add values. Now I'll go up to my testing function, run button click, and I'm going to declare a variable called total, once again an integer. And I'll get its value by calling my add values function. Notice that Visual Web Developer already knows that the function exists and offers it in the list of functions that I can call. And after the cursor is on the function, I'll type in an opening parenthesis, Visual Web Developer auto-completes the function name, and I'll pass in two integer values, 5 and 3, separated by commas. Next, I'll use my output function and display the result. I'll start with the literal string, the total is, and then the plus operator to concatenate the result, and I'll output the value of the variable. I'll save my changes and run the code. I'll click the Run Code button, and I'll see the result, the total is 8. So in C-sharp, when you declare the function, you put in the access modifier, the data type, and the function name. Then you declare the arguments or the parameters that you can pass into the function in a comma delimited list, and each of the parameters gets a data type as well. If your function is declared as returning a value, you must return a value, otherwise the compiler will complain. Now let's do the same thing in Visual Basic. I'll open the file programming VB, and I'll save it under a new name, and I'll name the new file functionsvb.aspx. In Visual Basic, you declare functions differently depending on whether they're returning a value or not. 
For functions that are not going to return a value, you declare them using the keyword sub for subroutine. These are the kinds of functions that I'm already using. The output, run button click, and clear button click functions don't return values, they just take certain actions, and so we use the sub keyword. If, on the other hand, you want to create a function that does return a value, you use the keyword function. The access modifier rules are the same as for C-sharp. You can create subroutines and functions that are protected, public, and private. Typically, if you're going to use the function within the current page, you use protected. So, I'll start off with the access modifier, protected, and then I'll put in the keyword function. Next, you put in the name of the function. I'll name it add values again. And, just as in C-sharp, you declare a list of the values, the arguments that you want to accept, in a comma delimited list. For each argument, you can receive it by reference or by value. There are certain more complex rules that apply to certain data types. In this case, I'm going to be receiving variables by value, which means that if I change the value within the function, it won't affect the value that was passed in. I'll name the argument val1, and I'll declare its data type as integer. So that's the first variable. Now, because the amount of code is going to be fairly wide, I'd like to add code on the next line. In Visual Basic, you can't just go down to the next line like you can in C Sharp. You have to explicitly tell the compiler, I'm continuing on the next line. You do that with the underscore character. I'll declare the second argument, once again saying that I'm receiving the argument by value. I'll pass in the name of the argument, and once again, set up the data type. At the end of the function declaration, you then declare the data type of the value that's going to be returned. I'll use the keyword as, and then integer. So in C Sharp, you declare the data type of the function before the function name. In Visual Basic, you declare it after the function name. When I press Enter, Visual Web Developer automatically puts in the ending code for the function, which is the words end function. Now, just as in C-sharp, I'm going to return a value, so I'll put in the return keyword, which is done with uppercase R, and then I'll return the value val1 plus val2. So there's my completed function. I'll go to the run button click function and I'll use it. I'll declare a variable named total, I'll set its data type to integer, and then I'll call my function add values, and I'll pass in literal values of 5 and 3. Then I'll output the results using my output function, and once again, I'll combine a literal string, the total is, and then I'll concatenate the total variable using the ampersand. I'll save the changes, and I'll run the page. I'll click the Run Code button, and once again I see the result, the total is 8. So, let's review again some differences between C Sharp and Visual Basic. In C Sharp, when you declare a function, it's always a function. The syntax is pretty much the same regardless of whether you're returning a value. If you're not returning a value, you use the void keyword before the function name, and if you are returning a value, you put in the specific data type. In Visual Basic, if you're not returning a value, it's called a sub or a subroutine. And if you are returning a value, it's called a function, and you declare the function's return data type after the function and after the arguments using the as keyword. Regardless of which language you're using, you use the return keyword to return a value, and as always, in C Sharp, you include the semicolon at the end of the line to terminate the statement, and in Visual Basic, you don't. Finally, to point out one other very critical bit of difference between Visual Basic and C Sharp, in C Sharp, white space, such as line feeds and tabs, are pretty much ignored. In Visual Basic, the end of line is taken as the end of the statement unless you explicitly indicate that you're continuing on to the next line using the underscore character, known here as the continuation character.